it pays to look through this sort of stuff when you're in a house because a lot of people who conduct house sales, they're not going to necessarily take the time. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am in a very special place in Florida. I'm in St. Petersburg, but I'm in Old Southeast. Old Southeast is the Oho version of Old Northeast, which is the fancy housing district a um, hundred years ago in St. Pete, and it is really cool. It wasn't as developed down here. In fact, this was the edge of town because there were only about 14,000 people here in 1921 when this establishment was built as a roadside shack on the way to the ferry to the southern part of Tampa Bay. This is called Chataway, and it is the oldest continually operating restaurant in the city. I love the way they use the old clawfoot tubs as planters. This was from back when people were tearing clawfoot tubs out of houses, so I guess they were easy to get. It's sit-down service, but you can also do a walk-up. It's mainly outdoor seating. You know, we've just gotten to the cool stage in Florida. It's only in the low 70s, and people are talking about having to wear sweaters tonight. Brrr. There's the front end with the bar. It's just such a cute place. And here's the old sign, the Chadway Drive-In, home of good food from way back in the old Florida era. Uh, it's so great that this still exists. And it is not the reason that I am here. The reason I am here is because this is the turnoff, which is great because it's a great landmark, to where the estate sale I'm conducting this weekend is. Now in 1921, they were just dreaming of developing here, which is why we have these old brick streets, but it took a long time for anything to be built here. And when it was, the first part that was built was driftwood. And this is where the estate sale is. This is the entrance. It's such a charming, wonderful neighborhood. I love the fact that they've left the old growth and it's just got a real jungle feeling. They did ask us to put up signs that said, do not park on the grass, which we've done because a lot of people have their sprinkler systems in the grass. And if you park on them, you destroy them. You have to kind of know your area. That was something new to me in Florida. A few new things in Florida when I first started doing estate sales. When you see big metal panels in the garage, do not sell them as scrap metal because they are probably the hurricane and storm windows in case there's a big storm. I almost made that mistake the first sale I did. Adequate signage is also really important. My N has blown backwards, but estate sale around front. The reason for that is because we're on a street corner, but the roads in this little area are very narrow. This area was developed in the 1920s and 30s, and they were at the end of the road, and all these houses back here didn't exist. This neighborhood behind was built in the 50s. So it was just a little group of houses at the end of the trail. They weren't worried about parking for an estate sale, but when I have 30 or 40 people at a time in a house, I do have to be. So it's a rainy morning and you can tell I've been outside. We had a little storm come in last night and it's rather dark in this house already. So I'm gonna show you everything the best I can and then we'll do some follow-up films and show you what happened. We wanted to set up the main living room as a really nice showcase for some of their better collections because they did have some nice things. And this was originally full of books. We decided to turn it back into a china cabinet. And part of the reason is some of the china we found. Uh, it's good to show things like this because, you know, you might go to a sale and say, gee, it's a bunch of blue and white transferware. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, these top pieces here are all Wedgwood and it's Tufts College and various other sites and they did a lot of these as souvenir pieces. They only sell for about 10 or $12 a piece. But they're based on earlier English ceramics and the earlier ceramics are the things people really prize. And here is a good example. This plate was sitting very unassumingly and you notice it is $85 at estate sale price because one recently sold for $195. This is Etruscan by Knight and Bridgewood. This is early 1800. So this is early blue and white transfer wear. 
And that's why people think that this is interesting. And it is, and it's valuable. So it pays to look through this sort of stuff when you're in a house, because a lot of people who conduct house sales, they're not gonna necessarily take the time. They might know that a Blue Willow platter should be $50, so we're gonna put 25 on it, but they may not know that this Shanghai Flow Blue is a $25 item. We put 10 on it. He even has a nice little bit of information about collecting. So he was a pretty serious collector in his day. A whole lot of the Blue Willow is Allerton's, which is a good English company, and there are some other companies as well. Now, we brought in the concrete. Might seem strange. Well, why do you bring concrete in a house? Well, this house has a bit of a Etruscan feel anyway. It was done by one of the main architects of this neighborhood, and the wooden beams were definitely part of his look. But then this also has coquina floors. If you look closely, you're going to see little fossils in these floors because this is made out of coquina shell. It's a very uniquely Floridian thing. It gives a definite look to the house, and so this really added to the look, I thought. And they had some nice concrete that was outside, and I'm glad I brought it in because now it's all sopping wet outside. And this mahogany side table is nice. Two levels, oval, and it's only $45. 50 for the pair of brass candelabra. We really tried to price things for collectors, resellers, and decorators alike to be able to enjoy. The fish are Franklin Mint, believe it or not, but they are collectible. I think we have $8 a piece on those. Some little pieces of Nippon. This is a darker tone of transfer wear. You'll hear it called mulberry wear. Uh, there's a brown tone called sepia. Those are things that are definitely older and more collectible. But then we have these pieces. This is Shenango. This is actually restaurant wear. And the cafe wear has a heavier weight to it. It's got the nice back stamp with the <coughs> Native American painting the pottery piece. We've got a little bit of cut glass, some silver plate. This is an official looking glass from the 1860s. That's why the silvering looks so bad is because silvering wasn't quite the same as it was in later years when they perfected it. But that's a very old piece and it's $20. I think that's a good value for money. I see a Hummel over there, some more brass pieces. These little gilded shelves are older than they look. If you take a look at these, these are probably 1940s pre-war. French or Italian. Little table is a Bombay furniture piece, but this is a true estate sale. So we also have things that are not necessarily what you would think of, but they are in an estate and we price them for resellers again. The B&W speakers, the one on the left goes for about 95, the one on the right for about two and a quarter. We have them priced less than half of that. Same with the Infinity speakers. There are a lot of people collecting st stereo equipment now. We also came across some good books. There's a lot of general books here, but there were some that were really rather interesting and we priced them accordingly. Mark Crowley, The Boys in the Band. This one actually is signed by the author. With warm wishes for a happy Christmas, 1968. And that makes that a pretty special one. There were no comparables on that, so we had to do our best based on other things he wrote. Here's some cruise ship photos and cards from the Queen Elizabeth II and pictures of the Twin Towers coming into New York back then. Fanny Farmer cookbook. Some erotic art, which we kind of put on the bottom. Some people do bring children to sales. These are Chippendale chairs, the four side chairs here. And they're really nice. I'd say they are early to mid 1900s Chippendale. A couple of nice baskets here. This one is Alaskan, it's a little bit worn. This one's a nice old piece and it's got really interesting stitching. You can see the spiral and you can see the top stitching over the rim. So that's an unusual piece. Thought that was nice. Some more books here. The ballet book sells for about 75. Around the mantle, we have the concrete lions, which we also brought in. A very nice blue and white mantle clock, although that's been a quartz motor replacement. 
And then a lot of nice decorative items. There are pieces of Wedgwood and Italian ceramics and a 19th century oil lamp here. Some collectibles here. The little table's interesting with the plate in it. These were side tables done in the 1970s. Over here, this mirror is really gorgeous. This is out of a very fancy New York home. It's from the 1920s. We have it priced at 135. It is too bad that it's not in a little better condition. Otherwise it'd be more, but it is nice enough to hang and use. And then some pretty things on this table and the table itself is really very nice too. We're gonna to move that tag so that we can see the pattern a little more. There we go, see the shell inlay on there. That's a very nice piece. Priced at 95. Here's the pen set with the gold nib, 1910s. Crown ducal ware in the chintz. These very nice English barley twist candlesticks are interesting. And then we go on into the kitchen, but not before we see this very handsome Gustav Becker 1925 grandfather clock, which does run. It's just beautiful with the tracery. It's interesting that it's German. It looks more like an American piece, but it was made for the export market. And that's why you have this Federalist Eagle on the ball. So going into the kitchen, it is a true estate sale. So we have pantry items, we have cleaning supplies. I know when I go to estate sales, if I don't find what I need for resale, I go shopping because there's always functional household items. There's a few tools, this shirtless man holding a Mongolian Coca-Cola can. And then we get into the kitchen we have this very nice patio set. It's indoor outdoor. Today it's glad to be indoors. This looks like Vassarelli, but it's actually James Allen. Villery and Bach plate up on the wall. That's their botanical line that was a rival of Port Marion at the time. This modernist side chair has a great style. The vinyl needs cleaning, but I think it could be done some fun colored glassware on top of here. I like these 1960s, 70s, 80s vintage multicolored glass sets. And the modernist little table lamp is neat too. Some Broadway posters and fans. And then we get into some nice table setting items. And then the usual stuff you see in a kitchen. Some decent pots and pans, some collectible patterns, including the Corel Ware. This Centura, the plain white by Corning, is becoming popular as well. Some of the cookware is pretty good. There's tea fowl and some things in the middle of all that. Old picnic basket. So there's going to be fun things for people to pick up here. And we really did price for resale. I've got a flat screen TV up there for 45 bucks. These little Cuisinart pieces are selling here for about half or less of what they sell for online. So there is money in this sale for other people. I do try to price to sell. This Cuisinart, oops, we didn't put the number on there, but it's going to be $100. That set without the attachment sells for two and a quarter online. So if somebody knows what they're looking at, that's a great price. Some neat basketry and some neat uh, terracotta ware. And then we've got a bunch of copper up here. This is always a little awkward. The new owners of the house are purchasing this set of copper and they want it left just where it is. So we had to put a tag that said it's not for sale. Now we're gonna come out to the back because we have some good light here. And because I don't want to look at the jewelry in the front rooms until it gets a little brighter. In the back here we've got, I brought this from a previous sale because it didn't make sense in a hilly place where I had it to sell, but it's a three-speed. It's a perfect beach cruiser. So that's here. We've got some plants. Everything's getting a nice wash. I tried to be careful about only putting things out that could take a nice wash because, well, we're going to get one today. Garden tools are $5 each. That's a huge discount from what you're going to see in the stores. We've got a couple of good golf clubs here. I'm asking 50 for the whole box. One of those clubs sells for 100 by itself. Look at the way the tree has grown into the middle of the house. I think that's so cool. If we come this way and take a right, the first bedroom has pretty good light, which is good. The second bedroom, not so much. There's people already waiting outside on the porch. You can see hiding from the rain. 
So there's a butler's table. Driftwood is the neighborhood we're in, and so someone local here will probably buy that for their house. These little marble lamps, I only have $20 on it. They typically sell for about 50 for me, so that should be a good price for someone. And then there's this beautiful print of Genesis with all the Latin. I think that's very nicely done, and I see we need to get a price on that. So I have a little bit of work to do before we open. We open in about an hour. I came early to film so that you guys could see the before, and then we're gonna show you the after, show you what people bought, talk about what prices were paid. Nice old stadium blanket on the left there. I think we have $8 on that. We've got the chest of drawers here. These tiles are interesting. They are made in Spain. And I like the card deck look on those. And then this is kind of neat. Now you notice that we put mattress and box spring free with purchase. First of all, I have these big hang tags because I don't want people feeling like they have to guard a piece of furniture and that they can't shop anywhere else because, oh, I don't want anyone to get this piece of furniture and I can't get anyone's attention. They can just take the tag off and then that means no one else can see the price because someone's getting it and they've got the tag. But I love that headboard. It's got a trundle underneath. It's a great deal for the price. I think someone will like it. And then there's this French armoire, only priced at $195. It's got really neat carvings, it's walnut, it's got the four feet on top. The gentleman who had it never put them on because they would have blocked his sconces and this room's already so dark. All the rooms in this house are quite dark. So this is a very handsome piece though. Someone's gonna like that. And here is the, these come apart and it's a good thing because this is too large to fit to the door, it says. So it had to be dismantled and reassembled. Stuff talking about it. And that they paid $4.75 originally. So someone is getting it for less than half price. Here's a nice area rug, a wool, priced at $150. We're gonna go down the hall here. Again, it's a little dim. I wish I could do more about that. Nice silver plate candelabra though. Some cute art pieces. A few of them are signed. I think they're mostly local artists. This fellow did like to support the arts. This little Parisian chair is fun. And then we've got the banjo thermometer. It is really dark back here. I'm gonna to have to try to find some way to get more light in this place. I think there's a clip-on light outside I can bring in because this room, which has some wonderful things, is just dark as can be. And one of the best things in here is this. This is Sacrifice by Robert Hodgel. Now, it's a pretty intimidating thing. I don't think I'd be able to sleep at night with it over my bed. But he is a, an artist from here on the Gulf Coast. He's passed on. He did very nice work. A lot of it is less sinister looking than this, but this engraving Similar had sold for 600 plus, so we put 300 on it here. We shall see. And then we've got some old Italian engravings, some other art here, a very nice selection of books, which hopefully people will be able to see. I hope that we get a little more light. There are some nice art books, a good collection of Horizon here. You know, our prices are $5 on art references and $2 on hardbacks and a dollar on softbacks. A dollar on old magazines like Life and Show Magazine, which had to do with theater, I guess. So there is plenty to keep people engaged here, I think. I think we're going to have a good sale. It's nice that we already have people out. And then there's the rainbow vacuum. Now we've got two and a quarter on this. This same vacuum with these attachments and a few less just sold for $4.50 plus shipping online. So you know, we've got to honor the client. We've got to try to get at least half price of retail the first day. If it doesn't sell the first day, well, tomorrow's half off day, so they'll have another chance. And here is a really cool four poster bed. I think that's really neat. And we only have 195 on that because, you know, it's a twin or a full. I mean, it's not a queen that's what people really want now so it's unfortunate that we're not getting more for these but that's the reality we just have to accept it and price things correctly and then there's one last area now this was not in the house because this house was owned by a gentleman who lived here alone but a jewelry dealer friend of mine retired and asked me to sell off all her stock including her jewelry case those are expensive so we've got 50 on what should be a hundred and twenty five dollar case Lots of costume jewelry, nice Eichhardt print, 
These other interesting prints are by a woman named uh, Alan. And we're going to just quickly get a little light in here so you can see a little bit better. There's vintage pieces, there's newer pieces. It's just a huge array of costume jewelry. And boy, I got to try to get some light in here. So I have some things to do. I'm going to go get started here and then we're going to open up and have a sale. Well, it is the beginning of day two. This is a two-day sale, so this is half-off day. And I want to show you what the house looks like after day one. Because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, as we were, how much stuff we sold. So we're going to walk, hopefully, about the same way I went through the first time. So this is the jewelry room, and there's still two tables full of jewelry, but no prints. They all sold. And there had been a third table full of jewelry here. The table and all the jewelry on it sold. So we have sold quite a bit of costume jewelry. And one of the things that's very important is, you know, it's not perfect display, but we do spend time between day one and day two straightening and organizing and separating. This was a lot more tousled than it looks now. You can at least see every piece and get to them without them being tangled. Jewelry always gets tangled up at sales. It's just part of the deal. You can see on this table that we sold quite a bit of stuff, not too much of the blue willow and blue and white porcelain. That's more popular in other parts of the country, and a lot of it ends up here with people who move down from those parts of the country. But we did sell most of the Franklin Mint Fish. We did sell the racks, the little case that was on the table. We sold several pieces of silver plate and well, just a bunch of other stuff. You can go back and compare to picture one and see the difference. Also, there was a table here with things on it. The table and the things on it have sold and are gone. This little marble top is still here, but we did sell the big speakers and all but one of the cameras. We only have actually what to me was the best camera left, which was the Agfa that the fellow used for a lot of his early stuff. This guy apparently was involved in early days of television and stage lighting, so he did a lot of still photos as well. I moved this up front because I just think it's really neat. It's Genesis in Latin, and it's just a really beautiful print. But we had it in a back room. I don't think it was seen. And now that we have different things on the mantle, you'll notice half of what was on the mantle to begin with is gone. And so we redecorate and we reset. Part of the reason for that is that we want people to see things they didn't see yesterday because a lot of people come back for half price. We also want things to be mixed up a little bit because sometimes people hide things. It's a no-no. If you want something at an estate sale, just buy it or just leave it out for someone else to buy. But don't hide it waiting for it to go on sale. That's just not very nice. Every time I find things like that, I immediately put them in the most conspicuous place possible and try to sell them to someone else. Just so you know. We sold a lot of the books. We sold the boys in the band that was autographed for $50. Uh, these are the books that we have left that were a little more premium. And we didn't sell the love seat, but we did sell the big china cabinet. And I was very proud of that because they're not an easy sale. But they went to a family who said they'd inherited a lot of their mother's things and they didn't have anywhere to show them. And so they actually needed it, which was great. So we moved the Chippendale chairs over to the wall instead. And we moved the shell table over here. There's a gal who said she plans to be back right at 10 in the morning to buy all of the chairs and this table. So I'm going to leave all the stuff on the table because if I do, she'll come back and buy it and we'll have to move it all. And if I move it all now, she won't show up. <laughs> That's just the way it is sometimes. So no china cabinet, no big mirror. In fact, this entire wall is pretty much empty. The grandfather clock sold first thing, which is wonderful. It went to a clock dealer who knew what to do with it, how to move it, how to uh, get it back in perfect time. And that's a wonderful thing because they're not the easiest sell, but it was a beautiful piece from 1925. And we are happy to see it go. Now, when we come into the first bedroom here, you'll notice we sold the bed. We sold... The butler's table we sold the lamps so what we do is again we use whatever shelves we have it's very important to get things back up to eye level and that's why we reset the house between day one and day two we got this carpet out where you can really see it now 
from the other back room because we sold the carpet that was in this room and we moved the armoire. We did have a viewer come and she's got a friend who's interested in that so she took pictures but it was better to have it there where it could draw people into the room rather than them seeing an empty room and missing this wall where the wardrobe had been. So that's what we did. And then coming down the hall here a lot of the art pieces are gone, but our goal again is to try to not make it look like an empty house, but to make it look still interesting. So that's why we keep moving things and trying to keep them at eye level. Here is the four poster bed. It is sold. They just have to come back to pick it up today. So this room would have been completely empty, but because they haven't picked it up, we decided to leave the things in it that were here. The rainbow vacuum at $112.50 is a steal today. I, I hope someone has the sense to get it, otherwise I will put it on eBay for the client and we'll get the $225 or $350 or $400 that it's worth. A couple of prints there. We got the bookshelf unscrewed so it can be sold. And you can see a lot of books are gone. A whole lot of books. We had stuff on the floor. We had stuff on the other piece of furniture in the other room. All the books have consolidated down to this. So we feel pretty good about that. And again, the four poster bed doesn't really exist. When they come to get it, we'll have to take these things off the table, which is perfectly fine, off the table, <laughs> off the bed, which is perfectly fine. It, but right now, until they come to get it, I'm leaving these things up here so people can look at them easier. It is a fact that in retail, oh, we can put this on this empty nail here. In retail, 90% of your sales are made between your eyebrows and your knees, and that's why it is so important to bring things to eye level as much as possible. Sold a lot of the practical stuff in here. You can see it's about half gone. We do still have this breakfast set, which I think is kind of amazing, because at 100 it was a good price. At 50 it's a steal. I'd be very surprised if that doesn't sell today. And because it's one of the few pieces of furniture left, what we did is we stripped it off as much as possible so people can really see the piece of furniture and the base because we sold a ton of stuff in the kitchen and we had lots of room where we could spread things out. So again, it looks spread out and you look and you think, gosh, there's still kind of a lot there. But if you really look at the pictures from yesterday, oh, there's a whole lot less here. The other surprise to me was that we still have the Cuisinart. Again, that was already priced at a reseller price to begin with. So if we get someone in who's willing to deal with it, that's gonna be a great bargain for somebody. At 50 bucks, you can make $150. This is why estate sales are good places to shop. And then out here, what's left? Well, the bicycle sold, the plant sold. We've got one more plant left. We sold a bunch of garden tools. We sold the wire rack. We sold most of the coolers. There's just not a whole lot left out here. So it's going really well. We're really excited about it. I just love this tree. I just love all these trees. This is such a great neighborhood because they let the trees grow. And yes, you might have a branch fall on your house, but the chances are if you leave the forest intact that the winds don't cut through it so much. So really, this house may be as safe as any other. And it's sure beautiful. Here's the front of the house. And of course we have boxes on the porch and we have signs everywhere so it makes it look a little different, but isn't it neat? It's very important that you have your rules and regulations posted clearly where people can see them because that is your protection. It's also important to say things like watch your step, not responsible for accidents because if you don't, you could end up with problems if somebody has one. Better just to tell people right up front that they are taking their chances coming into an old house that they're not familiar with. That's why we put caution tape down where there's steps and odd places. We have watch your step signs every time there's any sort of a little ledge, a lip, or anything because you just have to make sure that people are kept safe. They're in an unfamiliar place and they're looking at the merchandise and they're not necessarily thinking about where they're walking and where they're going. Yesterday it rained right before the sale started, so we moved in some uh, carpeting so that people could dry their feet so that the tile didn't get slick. So you just have to be mindful of those things. That's how everyone has a good time and there's no problems.
So the sale is over. We have a yellow moving van that has come with some gentlemen picking up the bed that they bought. I'm going to show you what's left. We're starting to box things. We still had some costume jewelry left at the end of the sale, but boy did we do well. This is all that's left as far as blue and white porcelain and silver plate. This table turned out to have damage. I think that's why it didn't sell. The mantle is completely stripped bare, as is most of this room. Other than this, the rug was very damaged and so is the love seat, so they're going to go to the dump. But this is what we like it to look like at the end of an estate sale because it's mostly empty. We are boxing up the stuff and getting it ready to go. There's not much left in the kitchen. We sold the patio table set. We sold the Cuisinart. We sold a ton of just everything, actually, that was in here. And then outside here, well, this is it. The plastic cabinet, one little table, one beach chair, and one green. So this is what happens to the garbage at the end of a sale, and this house thankfully only has one van load. We sold all the mattresses and box springs, which were perfectly good, but in Florida you can't donate them, so we're really glad that they sold. So what you're mainly seeing is junk that was in the laundry room and the tool shed and a little bit of stuff. Their love seat was stained and there was one bad rug. But that's it. We're on the way to the dump. I don't often do clean out, but I knew this one would be pretty easy. And with the timing of the new people moving in, it just made sense. So here we are coming into where we dump the stuff. Well, there it is in a pile. This is what happens to the leftovers. And then inside, I have recycling and hazardous waste left. And we'll get that done and then we're just about over. They are very strict at the landfills nowadays that you are not to take things that you see home with you, which is really too bad because somebody threw a perfectly good, completely intact rushed chair that was just sitting there. There's a three-wheel tricycle over there that's worth $150 or $200, and it's in the scrap pile and will be turned into mush. It's really a shame that there isn't a little bit more of a donation and recycling ethos in some places we just try to get as much of it in the hands of new generations of collectors and people who just need to use this stuff so that it doesn't end up here you see here a big incinerator they actually make some of the electricity for the city out of your garbage so this is what a french wardrobe or armoire as they say in france looks like when it is disassembled it comes apart, the top comes off, the post between the doors comes off, the doors and the sides come off as a panel, and then you just have the base. And that is why they are very nice, because they can be disassembled and they can move very easily as a set of flat boards. They were sort of the Ikea of their day, I guess. Except that you can take them apart and put them back together again and they don't fall apart. So this is what a basically empty house looks like after an estate sale. Got to get our table still. Not much left here. The camera bag and one bag of garbage. We were amazed how well everything sold. I'll show you the donation pile in a minute here. Nothing left out here on the patio. The people who bought this bought this house sight unseen from the current owner. They are from Colorado. They have never actually set foot in this house. So when they do set foot in this house, they will have lots of nice empty rooms to work with. I've got to get some of our supplies out of the bathroom there. Here's the back bedroom, nothing left here. And now I'm going to show you the donation pile because it's actually pretty small. Salvation Army is to come pick it up on the 6th, but honestly, it might fit in my van. I may just take it to them because it's this little section of boxes here, a couple of lamps and a TV, a couple of plastic chairs, this very sweet oval table that turned out to have some damage. There were a few prints left, nothing significant. One bookshelf, one chest of drawers, some books. That's it. That's all that's left out of this entire house. So I'd say we had a good sale. 
Well, I mentioned after I thrifted this strip that I was going to try to donate in the future to St. Vincent de Paul. So here we are, and we're going to find out how their donation system works. I assume it's in the back here. Here we go. Pull over the hose to alert staff. Okay, and it takes, they take everything. And so we bid goodbye to the stuff that we donated and hope that some resellers have some fun. That old table should sell for somebody for something. And there were some other reseller goodies in there too. This is how thrift stores end up with the stuff that you see people thrifting. Well, I sure had a good time here in Driftwood. We had a great estate sale. We had wonderful people. A couple of viewers came. Carol from Largo was so excited and it so, had so much fun, and so did I. And she brought really wonderful pastries from this amazing place up there that, oh, they're just, the, the, they're so wonderful. I can't even tell you. So that was really great. And then Joanne came to meet me and she ended up helping sell the French wardrobe. So thank you so much for that. And thank you to everyone else who came and, all of you who are watching because this is why we do these things. I'm George the Antique Nomad and it is uh, time to go rest and we'll see you again with the next antiquing adventure. So bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!